Hello, uh, I'm Professor Chris Rampley. I'm a Professor of Climate Science uh, in the Department of Earth Sciences at University College London. Uh, and recently I was appointed uh, the Chairman of a committee that reports to the Director General of the European Space Agency. It's called his High Level Science Policy Advisory Committee. Uh, the Director General is uh, Jean-Jacques Dordain, who's been running the agency for some time now. And his, his objective is for this committee to uh, reflect on what he calls interdisciplinary science and technology themes and ideas, unconstrained by considerations of funding or ESA's internal structure or the existing programs. Because what he's interested in achieving in the long term is an agency-wide, coherent and comprehensive approach to science and technology, a sort of science-led one ESA. Uh, and the reason he's interested in doing this is that uh, having uh, seen 50 years of development of ESA, um, the uh, complexity of the organisation, uh, which has many sites and a large number of programmes which cover a, a huge range of science, means that there tend to be bubbles and silos within the system um, and they miss out on opportunities for synergy uh, and uh, sort of coordinated working. So for example, in space science as in science in general, there's always been a very, very tight intertwining of science and technology. Technology opens up new windows, uh, allows new types of science, science pushes the technology because it always wants a greater precision or type of measurement that has uh, been previously unprecedented. So what he's looking for is to find ways to cut across the barriers in the agency and link together science and technology uh, in a uh, creative, a new and creative way. So my predecessor who uh, ran this uh, small group for a number of years uh, established uh, three things. Firstly, he established within the existing advisory system of the agency new interlinkages and uh, these seem to be working well. It allows scientists who would only have worked with one of the sets of technical teams in the past now to work across uh, those technical teams and projects where it's appropriate to do so. And of course it turns out that there are many technologies that have multiple applications in different parts of science. Uh, the second thing is that he set up um, a uh, body called the Future Technologies Advisory Panel. And uh, these, uh, this team, external team, works with the European Space Agency's engineers and technologists. And they identify technologies that would enable, that would allow new types of science or new pieces of science to be done uh, in the longer term future on the sort of 20, 30, 40 year time scale. So the sort of things they've been uh, identifying as crucial to that, uh, the future on that sort of time scale are large ultra stable structures in space. So you could have huge telescope mirrors or collecting devices. Uh, cold atom uh, clocks, uh, clocks with uh, hitherto unprecedented uh, precisions that allow you to do uh, work on the, the sort of fundamentals of gravity um, through to new work on, on planetary studies. Um, uh, propulsion systems in space, um, but a particularly interesting one they're looking at is torpor. Torpor where a human can be placed in a state that minimizes their metabolism and energy use so that they could, for example, travel all the way to Mars and use up less resource during that time. So that panel's working very uh, effectively and uh, everybody's very happy with the ideas that are emerging from it. Um, but the third thing that uh, this group is doing is thinking about grand science themes. So it's identified four grand science themes. Uh, the first one is to do with cosmic radiation and magnetism. So essentially the way that we connect right back to the beginnings of the, uh, the origin of the Big Bang, right through the universe. Um, this is essentially studying the radiation uh, environment in which we exist and what information it transfers to us. Uh, the second is understanding gravity. Gravity the great builder and the great terror apart. Um, which of course Einstein made great contributions towards 
um, but which we still have not managed to unify into a theory of everything. And space provides an amazing array of opportunities to explore uh, the nature of gravity, uh, particularly using those ultra-fast uh, clocks and ultra-accurate clocks. The third grand science theme is um, what we might call cosmic and terrestrial uh, climate. So the, the, the same physics, the same dynamics, uh, the same chemistry applies to the atmosphere of Venus or the atmosphere of a, an extrasolar planet, of which we now know of many, um, uh, as do to the uh, atmosphere of our own planet. So there's a sort of unity of science across a very broad field there, which that particular grand theme is trying to capture. And then the last grand science theme is life in the universe. Now, this has a very broad remit. It, it runs all the way from um, uh, the health uh, and uh, uh, well-being of an astronaut on the International Space Station through to somebody travelling to and existing on Mars. But of course, the biggest goal would be to identify the origins of life in the universe and indeed to uh, the, the great goal would be to identify the existence of other sentient self-aware life forms in the universe something that's completely eluded us up until now now those those goals are um, a kind of uh, rosetta stone uh, something that all science um, or many scientists are striving uh, to uh, learn more about. But I would say that of, of all of those grand science themes, all of them are fascinating, all of them justify the existence of a wonderfully successful agency like the European Space Agency. But most of all, the discovery of life uh, would be quite extraordinary. Um, there have been a few discoveries in the history of humanity that have changed our view of ourselves and our view of our place in the universe and uh, obviously understanding that the earth was not the center of the universe that the Copernican system was right that we orbit the Sun understanding that uh, through our uh, through Darwinian evolution that we're merely one particular branch on the tree of life that's developed on earth nothing especially special about us except uh, how we have managed to prosper and dominate um, but to discover that we are not alone uh, will be deeply profound and it, it might happen tomorrow, it might take many years, it might never happen. Uh, but the day that it does, and if it were to happen through an agency like the European Space Agency, firstly they would find their just place in history, uh, but secondly it would have a huge impact on our world. And of course that's something that um, uh, all of us can hope for. Um, and uh, we'll see if it transpires. Thank you.